Hello and welcome to this um, sewing machine restoration. Um, so I've just got possession of this today, well yesterday really, but today. Um, so here we go, this is the box. Immediately to me I can, it looks um, quite rusty, so like here for example uh, that's a fair amount more rust um, than I would like, and a bit here as well. Um, um, also here, this bit, this handle bit's rusted up. Although I'm actually quite surprised that the rest of the machine seems to run okay. I'm not going to run it too much, but there is uh, a respectable amount of smoothness already. And I had a little play around beforehand and things like these things, the little, a lot of the things, a lot of the little screws and things aren't jammed, which is nice because that's something I had on the other machine and was a little bit of a, a pain to unstick. But a lot of these aren't stuck, so that's a good sign. Moving around to something though that's probably a bit more fundamental. We've got a piece missing here, um, um, which ultimately means that the box doesn't really stick on. Um, I'll show you in a minute on the one that's fully restored what I'm meaning. Um, so yeah, normally here there'd be like some little eyes that would fit into these little hooks here. Um, but since that piece is lost, um, there won't... Well, I'll have to rebuild that piece, probably. Just something to look at as well. Um, someone's clearly tried to solve this problem before. I think they've cut a belt in half and um, um, screwed it on, probably to go over the top and strap it off, but that's fallen fallen off as well. So I'll probably, probably take that off or something. Um... Also, I think there's a fair amount of um, some water damage. So if we take this, um, this here, um, this is looking a bit talkative. Oh, maybe I should edit that out. Never mind. It's fine. And there's um, some things here, like some some thread and stuff. And what is cool, there is a a bobbin, so not too worried about that. Um, and there's also this little box of parts, which all seem to be um, specialised feet of some sort to do stuff. I'm not entirely sure what all of them are, but something I did pick out was a fair a spare foot screw, which I'm sure I'm sure could be useful. Um, underneath, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to find underneath because I'm not really looked too carefully. Um, this is probably quite dark, I don't know if you can see, let's see if I can turn a thing on. Nope, technology is too, too intelligent. Okay, um, uh, so there's a bobbin that looks like it's in okay order. Um, yeah, nothing too out of the, um, nothing too out of the realms of irreparability. Cool, yeah, so I'm going to start off by oiling it. Um, it's always a good idea to use, like, um, I'll show you what I'm using, but, oh, hang on. Uh, but it's always good to make sure that you're using good quality sewing machine oil.
so I was giving it a little little bit of a test wind and I'm noticing a little bit of it sticks um, and I'm suspecting it's something to do with in here so I'm just gonna clean up all of this debris and, and stuff uh, so earlier I mentioned that it was always a good idea to use good quality sewing machine oil and I'll let to give you a little example of what could happen if if you maybe don't use it so much so at the bottom of here you probably can't see it because it's all black and I'm, I'm, I'm lighting but I've been like this a couple of times and this has come out and it, yeah, it's pretty gross but like I mean I think theoretically you could have build-ups that could clog up the actual cogs and stuff I had a little bit of polish of this part which kind of goes here like that um, that had a fair amount of it as well. <laughs> the black stuff as well but I mean oh well um, and over on the other side uh, I said I'd have a little bit of a clean of it I had have I had a little bit of a clean of it and it, it is better um, but it there is still something going on so I think I think I might just have a think about what to do about that I've done a little bit of trying to get the, having another go at the um, the rotating handle so what I did do um, was I detached it you can um, detach it and undetach oh, sorry you can uh, attach it and undetach it here so I've unattached it and I've um, that's a good this one handed. I've been going in and trying to with a with a with a paint scraper. I've moved up to a, a a knife. I think I think it's working possibly. I can I can see a little bit more um uh, space around it. Uh, I don't think I'll film at the same time as doing this though, because that just sounds like it's asking for disaster. Um, but if that doesn't work, I'll put some more WD-40 on it and just hope that it'll um, seep in and loosen it up. Okay, so a little bit later, um, I've cut away all of the rust and I've managed to find a little bit of uh, movement, but not much. So I've just popped some WD-40 in there, hoping it will penetrate all the way through. Um, I've got a better feeling about this now, so that's cool. With these pieces, so this is this is the bit that goes on the end here. And this piece, uh, which is similar, which goes on the back here. Um, now I'm. The thing is with these pieces, um, I want to get some of the rust off it because they're they're rather rusty. Um, but the, those shiny bits you can see are actually elevated a little bit from the surface, and I don't want to um, scrub it, so to speak, because that'll wear down the top layer. And um, you probably can't see, but it, the top top layer is already quite thin so i think somebody must have already been like polishing this piece especially um because in the middle it's beginning to get the relief is beginning to get a little thin so i'm gonna try i'm gonna try popping them in uh some sort of little bag with ketchup because i've heard that's something that could happen that that could deal with rust I've got to be honest, I've never done that before. I don't know what it'll do. So, um, uh, I guess guess we'll find out. So, and ta-da, it looks like a nice tasty snack. Um, I'll leave it overnight and see what we've got tomorrow. And we're bam. Um, I can't tell any difference. Um, there might be a little bit of difference, like here and here. Um, but there's this on the on the side, which must have been the plastic bag. So I'm not a huge fan of that. Um, 
in this one I, I can't I can't tell the difference at all like at all so I'm going to put a pin in that and have a little think I might do some crazy science thing to make it not rusty anymore but I suppose you'll find out in a bit all right update on the handle I can turn it around this is not quite as smooth as going to be useful um, but it's a start somewhere to go off yeah so it needs to be way looser before it's actually the turning action is actually useful but it's the progress I've taken the bottom off the machine and I've done this because it's uh, it's a little bit well it's a little bit broken um, um, so overall this bit of the machine I'm more than happy with I'd like it to be a bit shinier and stuff but like it still works and everything and this part of the machine is is a bit sad well I think this already looks much better um, I've, these have just de detached um, but I think that's fine because it's a fairly pretty standard type of wood joint right and doesn't seem either is not glued or has become unglued over the years um, uh, yeah and this side up as well um, I've made some spare parts here I've made uh, one of these spare runner thingies uh, and I made this part um, which is basically the missing part here um, so there's something in the inherent design of this particular joint that I'm not particularly amorous about it's that um, there isn't any um, kind of lock and key type fitting whereas over here if if I can pull it apart with one hand we can see we've got a thing that's part of this one and then there's a corresponding slot here um, so that I think that back there I think is um, going to be a pretty solid joint but best as I can tell there was never any kind of um, locking in so I think what I might do is uh, maybe drill a hole in a little bit of a hole in this and a little bit of a hole in that and then put a little bit of dowel in both the holes to kind of have a little bit of a um, a, a proper joint because otherwise what's going to happen is this is just going to pull off no matter what kind of glue I use I don't think because this will have hooks on it which will be attached the lid which are where the handles are so there's um, this bit here I've taken it out um, it just kind of moves here doop, 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 and it's got this little spinner rooney here um, and that goes through a little channel and again and this kind of makes sure it doesn't go ballistic so what should be happening is this spinner rooney is kind of rolling around um and uh like basically like a little wheel for this thing to move on what's happening is it's not smooth enough or not loose enough to move independently of the the big bit so what's happening is, is this this kind of friction noise here is happening so I had a little quick play around with that thing I showed you earlier. Um, um, lighting is nope, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna move it somewhere to, to where lightning will not nope. Uh, oh, so I don't know if you can see. I certainly can't. Uh, um but um anyway the practical upshot is um this is where the pieces i was talking about live um the lo big long piece goes right through down through to here and now it's not making that sound anymore so the clinkly sound 
which is just because um, this bit on the handle here. Um, oh wait, no. If it wants to behave, oops. If it wants to behave. You can see this bit here. Um, it's got this little leathery pad, and this kind of goes in between two of the spokes of the flywheel, and it's the leathery pads kind of broken. So that's just the left, the metal banging onto each other. So I just need to replace that, which is no big deal. Okay, so I did a little something with these things here down here because these things used to be stuck. Uh, I'll just show you what I did just because it's probably a useful tip. I got um, a piece of chamois leather or something and uh, just a pair of pliers and just um, <laughs> took that off. So once, oh, I put a little bit of um, WD-40 on it first and let it soak in for a maybe about a minute or so you could do longer probably um but that's seems to have had pretty good results so just a quick tip for people that might be having similar problems so i've just finally decided that it's time to tackle um this problem in the drawer um this all should be like perfectly flat and laminated and things um and i think i've decided what i'm gonna do I'm going to get some like wood glue, um, I'm using Gorilla Glue but I guess I'll find, the first time I used it so I'll find out if it's any good and let you guys know. I'm going to get two squares of conveniently cut plywood, that was a, another project that I never finished, but yay, useful. And then I'm going to um, G-clamp these to get, well I'm going to fill the layers with glue, G-clamp these flat quite hard. Wait for it to dry, and hopefully it will be flat then. Um, and we're bam. So um, this is the replacement bit I made. So it kind of goes like that, this, and then like this. Um, so the idea is I'm going to drill um, holes into this bit here, 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 and here. And put pins through because there isn't any other kind of um, joinery work here and it it takes a hell of a lot of weight and we're bam um, we've got there's some pins in the top pins in the bottom um, holes here holes there okay an update I've managed to take this bit out it might look a bit alarming at first but then again don't forget that this bit was basically already broken off it just was still kind of stuck in place and it really was it really wasn't attached anymore any any more than just like by a by a thread um so i think i might be able to have a go at this now in a less cumbersome environment yeah so catch up with you in a bit and here we go, I've uh, got it off, I've, a little, some of the parts have come off, like there was a hole that I had to take out here and there's a little bit screwed on the end. Um, so there has been a little bit of damage, but then again this piece was very damaged beforehand. Most of the damage that was sustained in this process was already kind of there. Like the, the this bit's chipped off here, but this bit had already kind of chipped off and was being held on by being stuck to here. So hopefully I can, um, looking at this part, I'm thinking um, my plan was originally to cut, cut out this bit and keeping the original looking bit here. Um, and connecting the connecting this this and this the top bit here with a metal plate behind it um so i'm gonna have i'm gonna have another think and um uh and then show you what i've come up with when i come up with it well, I just did something that I didn't think would be possible. I managed to take off this super thin back laminate thing off the back of here. So, 
if I can repeat the feat on the inside of the actual machine, I will be able to hide the modern metal, fun the structural thing that no one wants to see underneath this original wooden beautiful thing. Um, the plan is to make a plate that reaches above this bit here. Um, so, um, so that the the handle will go through the plate, the the, the steel plate as well, and then um, the steel plate will be what's actually um, what's actually like um, being structural, and I can put back on the the um, historical original storied pieces on it as a bit of a facade so this is how the drawer turned out um, so it, it managed to flatten quite quite well so I'm quite happy with that and now we get to a part which I've been looking for forward to for a little while um, so these are all of the parts that I've made out of wood to replace um, parts that are missing or damaged beyond um, beyond repair. Um, and as you can see that they um, they're quite a lot lighter than the pieces than the um, the wooden part of the machine. So I'm going to be using some wood dye to make it look more original. Um, and there we go, that's one coat. Okay, next thing I'd like to look, have another little look at these bits that I took off the side of it. Now, um, what I've decided to do is glue it all to a piece of brown paper and then it'll be a little bit more of a solid thing before gluing it on to what will be this is the sheet, the sheet of metal plate I've been talking about. The reason for that is I think that I trust more in the glue to stick this bit to the paper. And I think that if I was to just glue them straight onto this bit the, on the metal plate, I think that some of the smaller bits like this would just come off. And these are the wooden pieces after two coats. Um, so I'm comparing them side by side. Um, I think I think I'm thinking it's probably best to put another coat on. Um, that's what I'm thinking in the minute. Uh, but looking a lot darker. And the third coat. Um, I'll just put them next to each other so you can see. I think I'm going to settle for that because that looks pretty darn close to me. So I'm surprised how close the match was. Um, but I'll leave it to put it right properly. Um, I'll just give you a brief re rundown of everything else I've done today. Because I did some things whilst this was drying. I've got the, um, the wooden panel, the inside panel, underneath here. I just did a little bit of um, cleaning everything up with Brasso. Um, yeah, so I cleaned up these with Brasso and stuff. Uh, I did something here. I replaced... Let's see if I can... Oh, I can't see it on this, but um, this little nub in here. Um, yes, there we go. That's got a little leather thing around it. That kind of worn through, so I've replaced that. Um, so now it will, won't make that little clattery sound that it used to make. So, yeah, yeah so, so now it kind of, if you recall it, have a clink, clink, clink sound. Yeah. Um, oh yes, and I, um, I'm sanded this a little bit smoother. I don't know if you remember, but a little while ago I sanded it down and I was saying it still felt a little bit rough. Right, it's time to make the metal plate. I've got this sheet of one millimeter steel here. Um, it will be relatively heavy. I might have um, 
if I'd have thought about it beforehand, I might have got a slightly thinner grade. But at the end of the day, um, stronger is better, and it's already quite heavy. So I was using this as a template. Um, this I glued up yesterday. Um, it's come out pretty darn nice. Um, yeah, so I think that this is going to be um, much more reliable. I mean, it's like a bit ugly with all the glue. Uh, I took as much off as I can, but like, I mean, what's well, more important is all the pieces stay there, in my opinion. Um, so I've marked out the thickness with a bodger. And I'm going to saw across with this saw. And we're bam, we've got a metal plate that's the right shape. And we're bam, I drilled two holes. So I'm thinking something like this is looking good. Like right buttered up to the old um, old fastenings, um, up to the top thing. And it kind of falls so that, um, well, well, it falls so that it, um, it will be about the right place on this. So I'm going to... Mark out these holes and drill them. So I've um, drilled through all of these parts here, um, through here and this, the front one. Um, I've also cut off this bit at the bottom here, which it will be replaced by this bit here. So hopefully that should be much more structurally sound. Um, and I've also um, sanded down this with some rough sandpaper to hopefully make it make the glue more likely to bind and stuff. Not that it's going to be relying on the glue, but it's always nice to have the extra strength. So okay, so I am now going to move on to gluing the bottom together. I'm taking the uh, sewing machine off so I can like chuck glue everywhere without worrying. Um, I'm just thinking about how to assemble it now because I think what I'm going to have to do is because there's bits here, there's a bit here that um, I want to make sure to glue in the right place. It kind of sticks in the right place anyway, but I want to make sure. Um, I just kind of got to make sure I do it in the right order so that everything fits in and stuff. But I think I've got it figured out. And we're bam, it's all glued up together. So that's really cool. So once this has been done, once it's dried, I'll cover in these pits bits of wood with varnish to um well protect them I didn't varnish them before because i didn't want the paint the, the glue to be gluing the varnishes together and the wood being only as stuck well together as the varnish is stuck to the wood so that's why i did it in this order quick note what i've done today i've um glued this panel to that and um, this isn't a structural um mend but it'll be just to kind of tack it in place when the and then the screws will be like super the, the screws will keep it together but the part i'm most excited about is this one here what do you do um because there's because like um it's made on this piece if you remember the one i kind of died no 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 attention to my tear out screwing don't worry um but this is kind of cool because it's a little bit of a jigsaw and put together in us if you know what I mean so these these were original one of them was not attached when I had it and the screw was all uh, screwed into the underside of the machine just to, I guess keep it safe there's uh, two parts are kind of shut off here this part wasn't attached um so overall it being together is um Super cool to see. I forgot to mention one other thing I did do today, which was um, beforehand these were kind of they these like bumped into the end of here, but now they move freely when they're not stuck. Yeah, um, and so what I've done is oh wait no. <laughs> undo the latch. I put these little blobbles in here. Now those are, it, they're called something like um, door stop, a door, I don't know. They're the things that you put on drawer doors and um, cupboard doors to stop them um, damaging themselves when they're closed and stuff. 
they weren't really very thick for the job so i've made i stuck two together um sticky face to sticky face ran a nail through it hammered that nail in and then put another one on the top of there uh, and these have turned out to be about the right size so super cool with super pleased with them as well um overall i think it's looking much much better so it's been a couple of days now i've been waiting for the bolts and nuts and bolts but in the meantime i gave the metal bit a little bit of a polish so uh i don't, don't i'm not entirely sure how much this is going to come through on uh through the whole video thing but in person it looks much better and happier um now a quick note on these panels um this and this here I was talking about doing some crazy electrolysis thing. I decided I couldn't be bothered and was like, I gave it them a rub down on Barrasso, but I made sure not to like pressure or anything. And then I gave them a little bit of polish and clean off and, and all that stuff. Um, so they're a little bit splotchy here and there still. Um, but I think that they'll be fine. Because um, after all, they were rusty as part of the history of the machine. Anyway, on to the thing that's... I'm finding it really exciting because it's getting really close to finishing a project. Ha ha. Um, so, yep, I've got the screws here. I can start bolting these these, these on through, through, and then onto the machine, gluing it all in place. And, yeah, so I'll show you what it looks like when I'm, when I'm all done with that, I guess, then. So I've dry fitted it all together before gluing. All looks okay. I had to redraw. Well, uh, I had to will bear with me here. I had to redrill one of these holes because um, one side they didn't quite match perfectly, but it's all fine now. Um, so I'm ready to take it back apart again and glue it together for final. Final, so that's exciting. Et voila, uh, it's all been glued up and it's just been left to dry. I'll leave it for um, however long the Gorilla Glue says, which I think is half an hour, and then I'll get off in all of the other stuff um, so yeah just clamping it into place to make sure it hopefully dries a bit nicer but I've had the opportunity to work glue right into the cracks here on oh right on round of the cracks here and the side and here um, and clamp it shut so hopefully those will become not apparent as well so yeah I'm getting pretty darn close and well, bam I've um, put this little fastening on at the bottom here as well, and now it bears weight. Ah, which means the only other things left I've got to do are basically cosmetic. So those are varnish, these two bits of wood down here, which haven't had a varnish yet. And once that has dried, I can polish off all the wood, and then all I need to do then is like test it out and stuff. And ta da, I've given them. Um, it all there, polish up, and I gave the bit to varnish, so, um, yep, so it looks much nicer now, I had to give it a bit of a clean, but, um, so this is what the outside looks like, this is what the inside looks like, so this new one piece, um, is, um, varnished and polished, and so is the rest of this, just gave it a bit of a clean up, um, um, and more importantly, I've given it a little bit of a look inside and tweak with the tension, and now it sews. So I'll just cut to that. So, a test piece. And there it is. That's where it goes. Um, then it might need tweaking a little bit, but that's it. That's for whichever fabric it ends up being so let's see if I can do this so this is what it winds up looking like so it's a sewing machine and it works and is nice um, yeah so I'll do a little bit of some uh, just so you can have a little look at it oh well I say that I really mean just so I can show it off and um, inside here um, got um, some of the spur threads and 
um, some of well some of the original threads and some of the spare bobbins. Um, around here and of course the box so this has been uh, my restoration of a, an antique sewing machine singer if you've got any questions if you're doing up a similar machine and you fancy someone's brains to pick um, you know how to get to me probably like um, I put this on YouTube it'll be on a YouTube comment or whatever um yeah um hope you enjoyed um yeah i'm really pleased with this um, i think it looks basically unrecognizable from when i got it uh yes so thank you very much for watching and hope you enjoyed and have a nice day.